Okay, big concept here. Give without expectation. People see right through a sales pitch and they're tired of a sales pitch. See, everybody else is in here in the middle. They are pitching people. There's always a motive for why they're doing this. Now, yes, the motive, the grand scheme of motive here of social media is for you to make money and grow your business. But if everything that comes out of your mouth is about give to me back here, that's a problem. When you take the approach that I am going to give information, I'm going to educate you. I'm going to give you massive value consistently. That builds loyalty. So for instance, think of it this way, position yourself as the expert. That's what we want to do here. Give without expectation because what will happen is if you go, Hey, listen, we're on this pro. This is what it might look like. We're on this project. Flip the camera around. You got your guys in the room. Um, we're removing some wallpaper here. We're hanging some crown molding. We're fixing the pond pump. We're building a fire pit, whatever your thing might be. And I just wanted to show you, you know, a lot of you guys are do it yourselfers. Um, you're, you'll never hire a company like mine. So if you're going to do it yourself, um, I want to give you a couple tips here that'll make sure that you build this thing right or you remove the wallpaper right or whatever it is. That's what I mean by giving without expectation. Oftentimes what will happen is you'll start sharing this stuff. Two things happen. Number one, you are elevated as the unselfish experts in your industry because of the amount of content that when they go to your website, they go to your social media, it's just like, boom, holy crap, this guy's all over. So that's one, positioning. Two is a lot of people, when they realize what goes into it, they go, screw that, I ain't doing it. I don't have time to do that. I'm not going to do that as good. And who are they going to call? They're going to pick the phone up and call you. So for instance, I keep thinking of painting examples. One of the big things is to change stained trim and doors and woodwork and windows and shit inside to paint it. Guys, it's like a seven, eight step process. Okay, you got to cover and protect everything. You got to degloss or sand the, the woodwork so that the varnish is, you know, off and it will, you know, have paint on, bite, the paint will bite. Uh, then you got to clean it. Then you got to prime it. Then you got to sand it. Then you got to caulk all the cracks, do a putty touch up. Okay. Then you got to tack cloth it off or vacuum it off. Then you put first coat on. Then you sand in between coats, do a caulk touch up and a putty touch up with bright lights to make sure it all looks good. Then you put the final, I mean, it's like seven or eight steps to do it properly. And if you're a painter and you're educating people on that, I can't tell you how many paint jobs I did before all this social media shit where people started their own trim projects. They got one freaking door frame into it. And they said, screw this and called us. <laughs> okay. Um, it's crazy. And I, I look back and go, holy crap. If I had social media, then I, my business would have been four times as big. Okay. Easily. Um, so give without expectation. People are burned out on sales pitches. Okay. Um, posting multiple times a day. How in depth are we talking? Does the content have to be different every time? This is later on in my thing here where it is. Uh, understand your best way of communicating, Jared. Whatever your sweet spot is, that's the best way. It's kind of like a CRM. People go, what's the best CRM? Well, the best CRM is the one that you use. <laughs> the best estimating program is the one that you actually use. So the best way of communicating on social media, whether it's pictures, written word, audio, video, whatever you are going to do consistently, maybe, maybe you're not good on video, but you're good on audio. Then you can start a podcast. Okay. Um, or you can talk behind the camera audio. Maybe you like to write and you think better that way. So then it's blogs or it might be short little stories of customer testimonials or what, not testimony, but they're, they're project profiles, okay? Um, I like to change it up here and there. I might do a picture and then I'll do, a, I'm a big video guy because for me, I just, it, I get it done quicker. And I think story is told way better especially in a visual industry like the trades. I think it's easier to tell a story when you're showing people things 
you know, you're here and you're pointing and your finger is on the thing that you're pointing at and you're like, hey, see how this downspout is jacked up here? You know, this is where the other guy went wrong. This is what we're going to do. All right. Um, remember, people have short attention spans, so I wouldn't worry about doing uh, videos that are much more than two, three minutes long. As long as you get to the point, you're educating, you can break them up into different things. So, hey, here's day one of this project that we're doing. We're super excited because we're gonna move this thing over here, we're gonna open this up, this and that. You know, you share a few things how you're approaching the project, and then you say, hey, I'll give you guys, I'm gonna check back in tomorrow and show you the progress that they're making. Tomorrow you do another two minute video, and the third day, and the fourth day, and the eighth day, and now the project's done. Now it tells a story. So hopefully um, that works. So Jared, let me unmute you here. I just saw your post. Hold on. You, you say you post multiple times a day, and it's like I'm, I've beat myself up thinking I've got to post three different kind of things a day where basically what you just said is I could post a little bit about the job starting and then going through what I'm doing and then finishing up or whatever I'm go working on that day. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. Or, you know, if you're having a team meeting, right, you have your, your crew together in the morning, you're having coffee. Um, I look at that. If everybody's standing out by the tailgate of the truck, having a cup of coffee at 645 in the morning, I'll take my camera. And I'm, I'm a guy, I like taking weird vantage point pictures and stuff. So I might take my camera and literally put it on the ground. So it's kind of shooting up at the guys, you know, and where it's just their silhouettes with the sunrise in the morning or whatever. And I might take that picture and post it and go, you know, one of the things I love about, you know, doing what I do is the guys that I get to hang with, we start every day with coffee and we pre-plan the day so that we can make sure that we're as efficient as possible. Have a great day, everybody. Boom. It could be that quick. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what, what about as far as like a call to action? Do, you, do we need to make a call to action on every one of these things or just, create content like you're talking about. Yep. So let me take that example that I just gave you. And absolutely, everything you do should have a call to action, but not a, not like click here to buy. That's not what I'm talking about. Sometimes okay. that's relevant. But so the example I just gave you with the crew, one of the things I love about working in my trade is this and blah, blah, blah. Okay, my call to action might be, what's the favorite, what's your favorite part of your job? That's nice. a Nice, okay. Um, you know, what... Uh, how does your team, you know, or how does your company or at your work, how do you guys start your day or anything that's going to engage people and give them an opportunity? It, I picture it like you're giving them the microphone. People want to have the microphone. That's why we have karaoke. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So, um, so that, that's how I would approach that. Like a call to action could be uh, like, if you listen to the CSA podcast, I end every show with, Hey, go give us a re review and share this with another contractor. Yep. Only on occasion do, do I or one of us say, head to the website and join the bridge, <laughs> you know, because they'll figure that out. Here, you just want to, you want to be relevant. You want to be top of mind and, um, and give them something really quick and simple to participate in. Awesome. Thank you. All right, buddy. All right. So uh, do you edit videos? If so, what program do you use? I do not edit videos on Facebook. Um, I only edit on, for my YouTube channel, I hired my son. He's taking more clients if anyone wants to hire him. Um, I hire my son, Dakota, and I do very limited editing. Um, so uh, on, on YouTube, we do, we do a little more. So we might change a couple different camera angles and some things like that. Um, that that's a little more down the road stuff. I'm just talking about some quick social media stuff here. So, uh, I might have a GoPro set up in the room and the main camera in front of me and we'll switch camera angles here and there. They'll zoom in on the board or my hand writing on something, whatever, cause it's my industry. If I'm a contractor, if I'm building something, if I'm remodeling a bathroom, I might wear a GoPro for ripping stuff out and have another camera in the room. And yes, you're going to want to edit those things. You know, look at, you know, I mentioned Jack Haru earlier, you know, go to Atlantis Water Gardens on YouTube and you'll see he does a crazy job of editing things. Um, for the everyday stuff on Facebook, guys, that's, to me, that's too much. It's too hard. Um, 
I get more, this is funny, there's other studies on this. I get more engagement, um, more shares and things like that with unedited videos. When it's just raw, it's off the cuff, I shoot a quick live video and it is what it is. Because I think what happens is I know that this is just it, I'm not gonna fix it, so I, it actually helps me relax when I shoot a live video. Um, I have no idea what the program Dakota uses is, but I know on the iPhone, like if I, were, if I am gonna edit anything on the iPhone, Sebastian, um, it's got iMovie on my iPhone, and the only editing I ever do is I literally take, like if I hit record on a tripod and I walk over here that three seconds, I just cut that and start it when I'm in front of the camera. I've done hundreds of videos that way. Um, one of the things that's gonna be important for you guys is this. If you're going to edit, um, let me share my screen with you guys. All right, so you should have the screen. Let's go to Atlantis Water Gardens. Here's Jack's page, okay? I was mentioning Jack. If you go to videos, you know, obviously this was edited and it has something here. This is a nice picture here. Um, you know, there's some, if I scroll through these videos here, I think we have to do a better job with two things here. And this goes for Facebook, YouTube, anything. There, each platform has a few different rules, but we need to make sure that our titles, okay, the things that we write are a little um, uh, more attractive. Our thumbnails, you know, the image is a little more attractive. You know, like I look at this here, if you just look at the views, go through your own videos, go through other contractors' videos and look at the views, okay? Is it the result of the, the thumbnail image? Is it the result of the title? You know, whatever it might be, look in your own and go, what are the views? What are the shares? What are the, the engagement times? And you'll start to see patterns.